ago. We must see in the middle of the series on the seven spirits of God. Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly one day. And the message that was, was that. Are you okay? Just full of the joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the message was clear. And it was, teach my people to be holy. And I remember saying to some meds, and if it was you, I think I said to you the one day we were talking, I can't remember the concept in what city it was, but I remember saying that the Lord is calling this generation. Remember, generations got nothing to do with age, right? It's about the season that you are on the earth. The Lord is doing something with this generation. And this generation is going to be compelled into a new level of holiness. To be the flag bearers and to be the standard bearers of Jesus Christ. Yesterday in our uh, pre and support was wonderful. We had about 40 odd people here. A lot of visitors. It was beautiful. And, and the Lord said to us, take your candle and go and light the world. Amen. Amen. And that is, what is, that is what is needed right now. It's not just a, a thing about South Africa or the thing about, you know, a certain uh, province or whatever. It's a global thing. We see the transition that's happening. We see the shift that's happening in the spirit because we see it happening in the natural. We see the uncertainty that is happening in different areas. We see it in politics. We see it in different governmental systems. We see it in leadership. We see it in all these different areas. And it causes a panic to send into people. Amen? <coughs> But we need to maintain our steadfastness. We need to maintain our feet on the rock. We need to keep our feet on the rock. Amen. Amen. But as such, we're going to take up the call of the Lord in this hour. Amen. He said it was very clear that the Lord is calling this body, the people in this community, even the many visitors we had yesterday, to a new level. For too long, certain people have hidden behind whatever bush. You know the bush you've been behind. Mm -hmm. Every bush that you hide behind has a name. Amen. Amen. But it's now o'clock. Yeah. And I've been saying that for about, about five weeks now. It's now o'clock. It's now o'clock. And we had a leaders meeting this morning. Pali, so what did you say? How did you describe it? It's, it's an hour never. What did you say? Do you remember? To make or break you. Make or break. I like that. Yes. The line is drawn and you have to decide on which side of the line you will be. Yes. Because history will judge as we said. Yes. Amen. I like that. I like that enough. And I see to Pastor, I was talking outside this morning again, and I kept on seeing that exact thing in the spirit that the Lord has actually drawn a line. Drawn a line and say, on which side? Because for too long we've been doing this. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And we must be open to walk through life like this, eh? <laughs> We're going to get muscles in weird places, <laughs> if you will. It's very unnatural. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not natural and it's not supernatural. It's unnatural. Can I get an amen? amen. It's not natural. It's not supernatural. It's unnatural. It's neither. Because we are not meant to walk one foot here, one foot here, one foot here, one foot here. We must decide on which side of natural we want to be. But come on. Come on, I must choose, much rather choose the super part of being natural. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How can we just want to live a natural existence or an unnatural existence where the very power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. And this generation, the earth right now, our country right now, our communities right now need a lot more than what politicians are promising. Yeah. Amen. They need a lot more than what leaders are saying they can do and what they're going to do. Like I said yesterday, what the police minister said he's going to do and not do. Yeah. Our nation needs something supernatural. Yes. Our nation, need, our nation needs a fire that cannot be blown out after a week or two weeks. Yes. Amen. Our nation needs a generation of fire starters. Yes. Our nation needs a generation of Elijahs who are going to rise up and say, Lord, turn the hearts of the people in this country yes. and then the fire will fall. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is what we need. A generation of Elijahs. And Peter still like Twister said yesterday, a generation of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who will stand in the flame and know that their faith has caused him to respond and that their faith in Jesus Christ is still Yes. 
Because a lot of people, when you get to such scriptures, like, oh no, what is Pastor going to ask me to do? Must I give up certain things or whatever? And this is, this is, this is also where the enemy has caught us out. Because the enemy has made us think that holiness is about morals. Am I alone here? No. About models, about doing things. Yeah. Stay with me. We freak out about such scriptures because we think that we're going to have to behave differently. We're going to have to do things differently. Now we're going to have to be more moral. Or whatever our version or definition of holiness is. Right. But the first thing I want to point out to you is that the direct instruction from the Lord is that we must be holy because He is holy. I would suggest that we start looking at what holiness is. Before we start freaking out and saying, but Lord, I'm not going to give up this, I'm not going to give up that. Look no further at the concept of holiness than Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at Jesus' character. Mm. People look at me with big eyes. Because that's not what you saw in the movie. They didn't portray Jesus like that. <coughs> Pastor has been blasphemous. How can you imagine Jesus walking through the streets of Jerusalem? walking through ancient Jerusalem and splashing water to people and running away. I can so, I can so imagine it. And I can imagine it because if it's there, it comes from the Spirit, why not? Now imagine Jesus all serious, a morally high man. Yes, he was that. But there were certain things about his personality and character that were near first. And those were the things that made him set apart. Today, 2,000, whatever years later, people are still trying to discredit Jesus. They're still trying to discredit his teachings. All kinds of things. Why? Because they did not understand there was more than the models that he was bringing to the world. Amen. He was bringing a new kind of character to the world. Yeah. He was bringing a new kind of personality to the world. Yeah. He was bringing a new way of operation to the world. Yeah. And he was bringing a new way of thinking to the world. Yes. Yeah. That is why we're still talking about Jesus today. Mm. Because of the newness that he brought. You see, it was prophesied in Isaiah. Behold, I make all things new. And how can we talk about holiness and want to limit it to what we think holiness is? Yeah. What we want to limit holiness to, 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 the, to the, the moral code that we think it is. If that's the case, then culturally, holiness will mean different things. My culture will different to you, be different to your culture if we, if we bring holiness down to that. In some cultures, it's fine to have seven spouses. And that's holiness for them in our culture now. Wow. Seven. Wow. Ooh, I don't know. When does he or she sleep? <laughs> and such, such things. Amen. How can we? And then we want to turn around and say those people are unholy. Am I right? They're unholy because they've got seven spouses. So holiness is now linked to that. No, it's not. The second or the secondary definition or prerogative of holiness will come to the morals of a person. <clears throat> but holiness means to be set apart. Holiness means to have a heart. There's a little difference. Holiness means to have a heart that is not flowing with the hearts of others. Yesterday I said to the people, I said sometimes we've got to swim upstream. Because it is when we swim upstream is when we are multiplied like salmon. We've got to go against the direction of the way things are going. Yes. Holiness is not about morals, but holiness is about where our hearts are. Yeah. And how do we know this? Because Jesus' heart was linked to the Father. Amen. That is the first order of business. Jesus' heart was linked to the Father. And that in itself brought in a manner of holiness. Is that there was a connection. There was a relationship. Amen. Amen. There was a relationship that was more than natural. There was a relationship that was not unnatural. There was a relationship that was supernatural. Amen. And that relationship, that heart connection, brought in the holiness of who Jesus was. Amen. Why? Because he reflected Amen. the will of heaven. Amen. He reflected the will of heaven because his heart was connected Amen. to heaven. Amen. 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 So be holy for I am holy is more than morals. It's more than a moral code. It's more than values. It's about a heart state. If you look at the book of John, a spiritful book, at every opportunity, Jesus spoke about his father. Jesus spoke about the business of the father. Jesus spoke about the business of the spirit because that was where his heart was at. And that is holiness. Amen. Holiness is not 
about your behavior. Holiness is what, what, is, what might come out of your mouth in the way you encourage people. Swearing and cursing and all those things, that is secondly people. But if your heart connection is right, if your heart is in the right place, if your heart is connected with the throne of God, from that holiness will flow. Because from that you will get and you will, you will encounter the will of heaven. And the will of heaven is going to be to speak your father's speech. Yes, yes. The will of heaven is going to speak and want to do the things that your father wants you to do. Yes, we know that age 12, Jesus went into the temple and he was lost. We know that story. And that is one of the first examples where we see his holiness coming through. Because they wanted to scold him. They wanted to say he was a naughty boy. Yes? They wanted to apply an earthly moral code to him. Yes. About what was naughty and what was not naughty. They tried to do that to Jesus. But, oh, he saw right through the trick. Mm -hmm. He said, don't apply a moral code to me on what is allowed and not allowed. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I'm about. And I'm about the heart relationship with my father. Amen. And that is holiness. I am doing what my father is asking me to do. I am about my father's business. Amen. And that is holiness. That is allowing yourself to be set apart for what the Lord has called you to do. Yesterday we had some visits. It was wonderful. And they were seen from, I'm not seen, but we invited them from FS Ollis. And it was a Saturday afternoon. They didn't have to be here. It was short notice. It was cold. And the, the transport was late. The taxi driver was in an accident. All sorts of drama. There was all those factors that went against it. But they said, no, no, no. I have been set apart for this afternoon. I have been set apart to do my father's business this afternoon. Yes, By coming and receiving and then going and lighting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is holiness. Amen. Holiness is not that, oh, blah, 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 my time, my business. No, 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 nothing to do with you. Newsflash. <laughs> holiness has got nothing to do with who you are. But holiness is about the connection that you have with heaven. Amen. I said to the people yesterday that um, a lot of people are feeling hopeless in these dark times in our country, yeah. right? Mm. I said a lot of people are feeling hopeless every day we turn on the news, we read the News 24 and all these different mediums about the horror upon us. It seems like a nightmare. Yes. It seems like a nightmare that I just want people to wake me up from. Mm. And I said to people, the first thing that you, 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 you kind of slump into in that moment is that you say, I feel hopeless. And I said to the people, he said that hope is not a thing. Hope is not a concept. Hope is not a theory. Hope is a person. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes. And if we want more holiness, our hearts are going to be linked to this hope. Our hearts are going to be linked. And hope, like I said, he said, hope sits somewhere. He sits on the highest throne of all. Amen. If we want more holiness, we've got to allow ourselves to be linked to his throne. Amen. Because from his throne will flow purpose. From his throne will flow direction. From his throne will flow identity. From his throne will flow destiny. Amen. Be holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Be set apart, because I, the Lord your God, have been set apart. Give me Leviticus 26, 12 now, please. And then Hebrews 8:10. I will walk among you and be your God. You will be my people. What are we coming into now? Just what I said. It's about relationship. Yes. It's about connection. Mm -hmm. Give me the Hebrews verse, please. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time in the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Does it talk anything about behavior? No. Does it talk anything about speech or anything like that? No, no, no. Holy comes from a relationship, it comes from a covenant, it comes from a promise and from that, now my next point I will put their laws my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts and that is why I said that holiness comes from a place of being connected to the will of God, mm. holiness comes from a place of being connected to Jesus Christ what will happen then? God's will God's, God's words will be written in your minds my second point of holiness, like I said, the, the, the moral code is secondary altogether. It's about relationship, it's about connecting with the throne of Almighty God. But second, it's about allowing Holy Spirit to influence.
influence your thinking. It's not about behavior. It's about right thinking. What was that t-shirt we made, I think, in year one, Pastor Al? Do you remember? Right? What was it, Jane? Remember the black one we made? Wasn't it right thinking equals right believing? Was something that right took Pastor Joseph? Something like that. It was about right living or right believing or something like that. And this is what holiness is about as well. It was believe it, live it. Believe it, live it. Okay, yeah, believe it, live it. But remember the idea was that when we think correctly, we will believe it and we will live it correctly. Yes. Right. So my point being is that holiness, or when we are connected with the Lord, the Lord will write His plans in our minds. He will write His plans in our hearts. And from that, holiness will flow. From that, we will want to be set apart. I too had to make decisions a couple of years ago about certain things that I knew were not connecting with where the Lord wanted to take me. It was not that I was forcing holiness. It was not that I was saved one day, then I became holy, then now the next day. And that is why a lot of believers fall. Hallelujah. Yes. They come into a church, and the church commands and makes you say, now you must stop drinking, you must stop smoking, you must stop clubbing, you must get married. And <laughs> That's why people fall. Yeah. I remember in my first Pentecostal church I went, I was still in my teenage years when I first got saved. And I remember seeing this trend and it really freaked my freak, okay? There was this young man in particular, he was the nephew of the pastor or whatever. And we knew him to be a naughty boy. Why was he a naughty boy? Because he didn't come to youth group on a Friday night. He didn't come to Sunday service. He didn't come to Sunday evening service. He didn't go to men's meeting. He didn't go to prayer meeting. So he was bad. And then I heard a word that, that, that shook me to my core. You know when you hear a certain word, you don't even know what it means. <laughs> you know, you, you, you just you hear the word like when you're learning language. It's like uh, Harry Potter, for example, the first time you heard Voldemort's name, the book describes it as it sent shivers down his spine. Now this word that I heard that sent shivers down my spine, it made my toes curl, Danny. <laughs> my toes curled in my shoes. Backslider. Yeah. Do you see how the church can burden people yeah. with these concepts, these moral codes? 
place of relationship. That overflows from a place of heart connection with the Lord. Amen. The Lord didn't have to tell me to stop doing certain things. I just knew and I felt in my spirit as the Lord wrote those things in my heart and my mind that I could not do certain things anymore. Yes. Nobody told me don't go there, don't go there. Amen. That is why in this house you know I'll never tell you that. Yes. I'll never tell you what to do or what not to do. I trust in the spirit of the Lord. Yes. Because when the spirit of the Lord moves, the spirit of the Lord brings that transformation. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we can advise and we can counsel on certain things. Our transformation comes from the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So our hearts need to be connected to the Lord. Amen. And the Lord will change your thinking about certain things. Amen. Yes. Change your thinking about so much. Yes. Do you know that a state of holiness will even bring a change of thinking about who you are? Amen. Do you know that it's not the Lord's plan for you? In other words, it is a state of unholiness to think poorly of yourself. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a state of unholiness to think poorly of yourself. Because the Lord is holy, He is set apart. And so we should be holy. Hallelujah. Amen. So allow the Lord to change your thinking about who you are. Don't blame all sorts of other things yes. and other people yes. for the way you think and the way you see yourself. Yes. Get your heart connected to the Lord. What did David say in Psalm 51? Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit in me. Romans 12 2. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. The pattern of the world tells you that holiness is about morals. The pattern of the world tells you that holiness is about attending 10 out of 10 services. The pattern of the world tells you that holiness is about praying for 30 minutes non-stop. And a lot of us after 5 minutes we like... Oh Lord, thank you. Seven. Felt like fifteen. Oh Lord. <laughs> Eleven minutes. Oh, I'm never going to get this thirty minute. Why are you doing that to yourself? Yeah. Why are you allowing yourself to be burdened down by a moral code? Why not just allow the Lord to work through you Amen. and in you and in your heart and in your thinking about who you are? Yes. yes. In freedom. Burden of slavery. You see, that verse in Galatians is not just about um, spiritual things. It's not about spiritual oppression. It's not about being trapped by a spirit of anger or a spirit about of jealousy. It's also the burdens that are placed on us by the systems of the world. Amen. Amen. I believe and I prophesy that Pastor Allah is even going to help your renewed thinking on areas like finances. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. do not conform to the pattern of the world, but yes. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Let the Lord write down new laws, yes. new principles Amen. on your mind Amen. and in your heart. Amen. Oh, this is so good. Amen. <laughs> Galatians 2.20, Colossians 3.3 3, and Ephesians 2.6. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. Amen. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself what do we have there? We have more relationship. Mm. Do you see that? It's about Jesus living inside of us. That is the closeness that your spouse will not ever get to. Sure. Sure. Can I get the married people to say <laughs> And please note I said married people. That is not a moral call, but that's from that day. <laughs> to a place within us that not even the closest person we allow will get to. I've been crucified with Christ. There is a relationship at work there. There is a partnership. There is a tightness that cannot be replaced. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives. When we connect with the Lord, we will want to become more like Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 We will want to think more like Jesus. We will want to portray his character. We will want to get to know him more. I believe we will even be addicted to learning about who he is. Amen. To be in love with him. Amen. 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 There's that beautiful song, Falling in Love with Jesus. Do you know it? Falling in love with Jesus. Right? It's about it's about a daily falling in love with who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. It's about a daily yeah. telling the Lord 
God, how wonderful and how beautiful it is. We do that with our spouse, don't we? Well, we should. I certainly do, and I love it. It's the best part of my day. When I get to tell my spouse, Just sitting with peeps in the 
street. And people get very angry with me when I say Jesus had dirty feet. But I always picture him that way with dirty feet. Why? Because he wore sandals. It's logical, right? Yeah. So yeah. just put your religious spirit in your back pockets. We'll deal with that later. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I believe that Jesus just sat there. And I believe he just parked on the, on the road, on, on the stony streets of Jerusalem. And he just parked with his dirty feet. And he just spoke to the boys. And he just ate bread. And he took some to drink, whatever he was drinking. And he just made jokes. And if someone says something, they're like, ah, oh, Judas, man. That's a good joke. And then laugh, and I believe in love, he's going to have his role. And maybe if, if Jesus was like me, and I'm sure he was, because I'm like him, and we made his image, and he would have a loud and laugh. I love a good laugh. Where does that come from? We are made in his image, amen? Amen. So why do we imagine Jesus as the stuff? Because we go, what? Walking through him, you know? No. Full of jokes, full of love, splashing people with water. I'm sure Jesus died to a few of those disciples in the river Jordan. Maybe there was no one coming for baptism. He took panties and like, <laughs> and he just dumped you. <laughs> Starts with connecting with the throne. Hallelujah.